What is happening, Root Crew? It's a beautiful day. Ian's finishing up his craziness down on the state of Florida. Um, here in Georgia, I don't think there's a cloud in the sky. It'd be a beautiful day to be out on a lake or up in a tree stand. But before I get in the woods, I've got to get this golf cart going. In the last episode, you saw we replaced the, the golf cart controller. Um, that did give power back to the golf cart, which I wasn't getting anything before. Um, so it's actually communicating. I've replaced the accelerator uh, sensor. I've replaced the brake sensor. I've replaced the speed sensor on the side of the accelerator. The only other things I know of that could be causing the issues with this golf cart is it's either going to be the batteries, which I'm going to replace with lithium if I have to replace. And I'm looking in excess of $1,000. So any sponsors out there, hit me up. There's no brushes in this motor. I don't think the motor's bad. The only other thing is going to be the speed encoder within the motor and it mounts on the end of the armature. So let's pull it out, let's replace it, and hopefully we get a good functioning golf cart. Follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure this key is turned off and pull it out. Next thing we're going to do is flip it to tow mode. We're going to take either a positive or negative cables off. I'm going to do the negative because you tend to get less sparks that way. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the three cables, the blue, the yellow, and the green from the controller plate. That should be a 10 millimeter wrench. These three cables are connected to the top of the motor and we have to take the motor completely out. Now I'm going to straighten these cables a little bit so they won't pull on anything else when I pull it out from the rear. Now the first thing we're going to do in the rear is we're going to take our straps. I'm going to pull these straps out of the cinch end loosen it up because I'm going to drop this around the motor to hold the weight while I take it loose. We're going to feed the strap under the motor but over the rear axle and we're going to pull it secure. Once everything's tight, you want to go ahead and unhook all the connections. The e-brake, the um, speed encoder, which is what we're replacing. It has a four-wire connection and then a two-wire connection here to the motor. This is the one we're going to be replacing, which goes down inside this end. So now we're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench to take these out. I have already marked my motor where it will line back up. So we're going to take these bolts out. There's only a few bolts that hold this motor on. I believe four, four or five. You can see there's two here, these two, and then there's one here, one here, and I think there's one on that front side as well. These are set to hold most of the weight when I do get this these bolts out. It'll continue to hold because it's got the uh, spiral gear that goes into the motor and that will hold the motor in place. 
we'll leave that bolt on there because all these wires will come out with the motor when I pull it. So we should be good. Let's see if it slides. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull these wires through so that, that doesn't hang up once I get it because this golf cart motor is pretty dang heavy. It's impressively heavy. I've pulled it out twice already just to check the armature, make sure it's spun freely and to replace the e-brake on the end. As you can see there, my clamps just held it up, no problem. So now we're gonna pull it through. It is a good, it is a good rule of thumb to check your spline gear. And I can tell that it's moving freely. So there's not a problem in the hubs or the differential. It's gotta be within this motor or the batteries. All right, next up, we're going to remove these bolts here with a T25 Torx. So while you're doing this, you want to make sure that you lay your screws out in a pattern so that you know where they go back. Um, this type of job, you won't get that many screws to have to worry with um, getting turned around but there are some jobs you'll do where you will. So we're going to slowly remove this cap. Now we're going to remove the three bolts from this end. It's 10 millimeter. Now when you put a new e-brake or motor brake on these um, on these motors you don't want to tighten it down all the way that can cause the brake to rub constantly and not release enough when you press the gas pedal and when it gets an electric charge right. this brake will come off just like that set that aside now we've got to take these bolts out here this armature spins no problem it's a little got grease here I put in it last time I took it off and um, so that all looks good. You want to make sure that these teeth inside this and on the gear, on the, the um, differential, that none of that's tore up. Because if those teeth are eat up, the motor will spin and kind of jump gears. These bolts are all the same length, same thread, same everything. So it doesn't matter if they go back in the same holes. You just want to make sure that you hand thread them before you impact them if you use an impact. I'm going to uh, hand tighten everything on this myself. All right. So once we get that done, we're going to lay it back on its side. We're going to separate these two pieces, this piece from the body itself. Now I've also replaced the charging port on this golf cart. So I know the issues that I'm having have nothing to do with that. You just barely want to tap because you don't want to break this motor housing. Just, just let the weight of the hammer head do the work. If it doesn't move, it will eventually. All right, so mine is coming loose. I'm going to take this rubber piece off and it just pops out from around all the wires. It opens up like this. That goes underneath your electrical cap. Do not 
mess up these wire bindings. It, it'd be hard to do, but... Okay, so what I'm going to have to replace is this piece right down here. That's what the next thing I'm thinking may be the problem. What I'm going to have to do is take this lock ring out of here. So these are going to go in here. When I squeeze, they'll spread that lock ring out. There we go. All right. So now you can take flat head under it, pop it on off, and that's what we're taking off. Once we remove that, there should, yep, there's a washer. Now, what you'll want here is a rubber mallet or a dead blow mallet, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap on this shaft Be sure to hit flush and clean. You don't want to bend up this end where the motor brake goes. So I'm going to set this aside. And now this is what we're going to remove. These four screws and this encoder ring. Now in your speed encoder bearing kit, you'll have all new screws to replace those and these metal brackets to hold the encoder ring in, the encoder bearing in. So we're gonna pull these out. Like I said, I keep everything in the same order it, it went in with. Let me make sure this bearing looks the same. Now we have to hammer that bearing out. I'm not worried about damaging this old encoder bearing because I have the new one. The next bearing is going to go in with the wire facing up and towards this little slot here. You can somewhat shimmy it into place until it gets down to a certain distance. And then we're going to take it to a vise to press it in the rest of the way. We're going to mount our new plates in here. They have a little ridge along the bottom side. That's what you want to put right up against the encoder bearing. This little ridge right here. Put that right up against your encoder bearing, just like that. We're going to take our new screws, Phillips bolts, screws, whatever you want to call these things. We're going to get them started so they don't cross thread. We know they're all going straight and then we'll screw those in the rest of the way. Now once they're close to tight, I'm going to squeeze these two bearing plates together so I can make sure they're held right up against the bearing encoder. All right, so now we're going to put the motor um, armature back in. I'm going to tap on the outer edges all the way around this until it seats completely. Just all the way around and keep it even. You don't want it hard, just the weight of the hammerhead does it. After it's seating good and tight, 
we're going to drop our wave washer on and then we're going to put this lock ring washer back to hold it all together now you just need to spread it enough to get it on there you can push down but um, for the most part you can use a flathead screwdriver or a Phillips screwdriver to push it down all the way around once you get it in place just like that push down on the back push down on the front it's in so that's all there is to it so now we're gonna put this motor back together and you're just gonna work in reverse steps um, I'm going to put it inside rather than trying to put that over top. Keep your wire out of the way. Make sure that wire comes up with the rest of them just like this. Um, we're going to get some of these long ones started in the right direction so we know that we're lining up. Let me get over here so you can see when you tighten these long bolts it will actually pull all this together. You can also line up based on this square box here um, which is where your cover plate goes for all your electrical cords. The bolts will pull it all together the rest of the way. I just want to make sure I have a couple bolts on here to keep it aligned so it goes together straight. Take a minute, if you will, to uh, go down below and subscribe. I do hunting, fishing, trips. I do uh, camping, unboxing, and review of, of outdoors type equipment. How to's such as this video and all the videos on my hunt and buggy build. And uh, make sure you click that bell so that you're notified when a video gets posted and make sure that you click that thumbs up for me so YouTube makes me feel good about myself all right all that's done I think we're ready to uh, get this bad boy back in the cart and see how it goes I'm not going to show you how to mount it back in the cart I'm not going to deal with all that because you it's basically the reverse you lower it in there if you want to use straps or not i don't use them when i'm putting it back because i just lower it down get those splines on that gear um, that worm gear aligned up and then uh, with the transaxle and then uh, pull it together put those bolts in tighten them down i'm probably going to spread those bolts out because i think they're supposed to be five or six total on this um, oh i got to put my motor brake on all right putting your electric motor brake back on you want to make sure this ring stays in this groove all the way around but you want to lower this down very carefully we're going to turn it until it seats there it goes your brake cord should go out the top right next to the other um, cables so make sure you keep that all lined up. Oh, it oh, goes. It work. Apparently that fixed it, Colby. Oh shoot, there's spider webs. I don't like those spiders. Is he still back there? We got a golf cart, buddy. I don't know how long it'll last, but with these old 10 year old batteries, we're gonna it's see. Cool. It's fast, ain't it? It works. Yeah. I hope that's pointing right. We'll get up here and I'll readjust it. 
but we got speed. We got a golf cart for hunting. She about to hit me. Lady about to hit me. She was hit me in my golf cart. My hunting buggy. We got it running. It was the uh, speed encoder bearing inside the motor that tells the controller how fast it's spinning. But it's working now.